Hello and welcome to Bright Talk. I'm Josh Downs. Today I'm joined by George Paptis from Umbrella Security Industries. George, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. One area that's always having questions asked is the financial sector. Uh, what do you think the banks and financial institutions can be doing to better protect everybody's money? Well, uh, it's, it's our personal belief that uh, there is no absolute security. So no matter how much uh, the banks invest, uh, they will become a victim sooner or later. And that, that, that is exactly what we see on the headlines every single day. Banks are really investing very heavily in cybersecurity, but still they, um, they, they get hacked. Um, so uh, we strongly believe that they should be prepared to identify attacks and respond to attacks, as well as preventing those attacks. So it's a balance between preventing and responding, I suppose. And that balance is currently missing from the market. Everybody is buying whatever is on the shelf in terms of technology, but very, very few enterprises actually invest in being able to uh, respond effectively in cybersecurity attacks, minimizing the impact, uh, essentially, and the costs uh, as well. They touched on costs and investments just now. Um, how do you think if you're a CISO and you're, you're investing some of your budget in security technologies, how can you be showing ROI to the board that this has been a worthwhile expenditure? Showing ROI in, uh, on the board is, is quite a difficult task to do, uh, especially when cybercrime evolves so fast. Uh, but I think one of, one of the major, two, I think, major decisions in uh, every board should be to embed cybersecurity on the product design and the product development. So it, it should be part of the product development rather than an aftermath um, activity. So if you, sh if you calculate cybersecurity as part of the product cost, the product development cost, it becomes more easily for them to comprehend. And also, n uh, another thing that it's, it's now available in the market, and I think CISOs are more and more considering it as an option, is the cybersecurity as a service offerings in the market, which means that you can now balance uh, the in-house uh, investments uh, with the out outsourcing some of the activities and functions uh, so that you can also minimize costs. Because if economies of scale r really help those um, companies offer attractive service offerings. Now, one aspect that many CISOs uh, invest in today is, is, a, is a pen test. Now, what steps do you think um, and what components make up a really comprehensive pen test? I think the most important aspect that is really uh, out of scope most of the times is not testing only the, uh, the cybersecurity by itself on the enterprise, but also test the, the readiness aspect. In most of the tests that we perform, we are uh, we find our well, our, ourselves easy to enter the client. And that's, that's more or less expected. What it's not expected, and it's, um, it comes out of, as a surprise, is that no client is really aware that they are under attack. So we, we really bypass every available security control, and uh, we actually get root, as we say, on the client side. But the, the most disappointing fact is that nobody from the client side is really aware that they have been compromised. So the readiness aspect should be one of the most important objectives of every um, comprehensive penetration test. So building readiness is one aspect where you can really defend yourself. Do you normally see any glaring holes if you are running pen tests? Readiness is, is a key aspect because it actually defines the customer's capability to understand and have the visibility of what is happening, a situation and awareness. So if you do not have a, a, a very good uh, readiness level, means that uh, you do not really know what is happening into your network, either because you are under a heavy attack or you are, your security is compromised. So if you don't know what is happening in your network, that, that is very, very um, scary. Uh, but if you are aware that you are under attack, even if your systems have failed, that gives you um, a very big advantage in terms of responding to the attack effectively and uh, minimizing or mitigating the attack from 
propagating further into the enterprise. And what are the first few steps you normally advise? Say the breach has been detected and remediation is the first thing on my mind. Do you have a first couple of key steps you advise? Well, the, 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 the most important decision when we identify that there is uh, an attack ongoing is, uh, is, is, um, is a decision of whether we continue to collect data from, from, from the attackers or we actually stop the attack. And this decision is uh, also, uh, it also involves legal uh, advice. It also has to do with the nature of the attack. Because if you keep collecting data, you are actually preparing yourself uh, so that you can have the, the right um, uh, legal um, uh, artifacts to present on the, on the legal court so that you can prosecute the attacker. On the other hand, if you stop the attack, you, you stop losing more money, but you actually risk losing the case because you don't have the data uh, as, a, as, a, as a proper artifact to prosecute the attacker. So that's, that decision between stop the attack or continue monitor or collect the evidence is a, is a decision that we are most of the times called to, to take and we need to take that decision very fast. Now one final thought George, there's a lot of negative rhetoric in the industry, security industry, threats, breaches, hacks in the news all the time. Yes. Are you seeing anything really positive the industry is doing? Well the, the, the industry is evolving very fast, so Internet of Things, uh, New, new payment methods, new transactions, new commercial models. You know, everything is evolving. And, but that, that evolution actually creates a, a larger attack surface. So it, it is actually expected to see cyber, the, 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 the nasty part of, of the world, which is the, 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 the cyber crime or the crime by itself, because you see the crime remains the same. The basic DNA of crime remains the same. Cybercrime is another expression of crime. So uh, this does not minimize, or it's, it's not affecting or uh, reducing what is happening right now in our world, which is a, a huge technology evolution. And we are actually living into a, a very uh, big times, uh, seeing everything change around us. So crime, crime is part of our, our lives and part of our world, and cybercrime is just a, another ex expression of this. Well, George, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure chatting to you. It was a pleasure as well. Thank you for having me here. And thanks to you in the audience for tuning in. If you'd like to leave any feedback, please uh, add it to the Bright Talk player. And if you'd like to ask any questions, feel free to tweet at Bright Talk, and we will try to get back to you. See you next time.